Does it mean you're ugly if your autofocus face thing doesn't want to focus on your face? Oh, there we go. It's been a while since I've done the most requested thing, most requested bait type of bait. It's gonna be one of them days. Don't know how to talk again. So what's the most requested thing? A frog, just a simple frog. People say I should make a frog the most. Just a frog. Who makes just a frog? Imagine just making a frog. No. No, I won't. I won't make just a frog. What am I gonna make? A poison dart frog. We're gonna find out what fish are the stupidest that would actually go for a poison dart frog. Let's get started. Gonna scan this and then flip it around, mirror image it, and have it exactly the same on both sides. And that means we're gonna get back into the soft plastics. And that also means this is pretty much just a, a normal frog. You have to just add the color to make it a poison dart frog. I'm going for like skinnier legs and stuff in a that kind of shaped body, but this is just like a normal frog lure. Imagine just making a frog. Fun facts! Okay, fun facts on the poison dart frog, also known as the dart poison frog, and the poison frog, and the poison arrow frog. They don't have the pronunciation for the Latin name. Doesn't that just frost your buttons when they don't have that? It might be pronounced dendro bati. Central and South America are where these types of frogs are located. So these little amphibians, they're active during the day and sleep at night. All of them have brightly colored bodies. Very distinctive. If you were to come across a poison dart frog, you would really, really wonder, is that poisonous? And the answer would be yes. They look ominously harmless and they are very harmful. There's a word for that. Aposematism. Refers to the color or the appearance of an animal and it warns predators that, hey, I'm toxic because I'm so brightly colored and weird. It says that there's other frogs in this family of frogs that display this color, but they have no toxicity to them. They're just kind of fooling predators with this trend. That's kind of cool. So these poison dart frogs, what they do to make this poison is it's from their diet. They eat ants and mites and termites, and uh, somehow the fluids and their digestive system are able to uh, create their toxicity in the poison. It goes into detail, but that's with a study, and I'm not about to go into a study here. Next fun fact. So the reason they're called dart frogs, where these dart frogs are located, the indigenous people used their toxic secretions and covered their blow darts, you know, the, the tips of maybe their arrows and their blow darts and stuff, in their toxic secretions and uh, I, I'm sure you can imagine why they did that in order to bring other animals into a paralysis state from a blow dart. It says that there are 170 species that's that they have documented that indigenous people do this with so it's not just the poison dart frog. There's different plants that they've used and uh, apparently there's a lot of different plants that they do this with and not just the poison dart frog. Poison dart frogs are tiny. We're talking centimeters one or two centimeters, a little over half an inch, is a, is a common size for some of the smaller ones. The biggest a poison dart frog will grow to is about six centimeters or two and a half inches um, and only weighing about an ounce on average. So smaller than this, but this is a poison dart frog, don't get me wrong. That's what we're making. Um, adult frogs lay their eggs in moist places, including on leaves, plants, exposed roots. So once the eggs hatch, the adult uh, piggybacks the tadpoles one at a time to a suitable water or pool. It's interesting, it's one at a time. So then the tadpoles do their thing there and they do their metamorphosis. The tadpoles apparently feed on unfertilized eggs laid in intervals by the mother. We live in a gross world. I think I'm gonna go ahead and skip all the fun facts about poison dart frog reproduction. So the poison comes through their skin. You can rub your blow dart just against this frog and it will have the toxins on it. So the reason that they think that this frog creates its toxins but from its diet in a reaction with its digestive fluids is that the poison dart frogs that humans have in captivity 
that are fed not as much of a uh, natural diet as it otherwise would have if it wasn't in captivity don't produce as strong of toxins. I knew I was gonna get back to that and try to explain that, but that's why they think that. The chemicals that they're able to extract from a poison dart frog, they say that they're able to make some painkillers from it. Um, a painkiller that is 200 times as potent as morphine. So you can make quite the painkiller from this frog. <laughs> but apparently you're not gonna wanna take it because the therapeutic dose is very close to the fatal dose. This kinda seems like something you don't wanna mess with. The most poisonous poison dart frog, which is the golden poison frog, has enough toxins to kill 10 to 20 men and 10,000 mice. The mean little frog. I'm sure it's not mean at all, it's probably very friendly and this frog probably just hops around all happy, living life, because there's nothing that wants to mess with it, you know? Probably a very carefree frog. A natural life of one of these poison dart frogs is about three years, but when you have them in captivity, they can live up to 25 years. That's crazy. A 25 year old frog. Wow. So yeah, definitely a frog you don't want to touch. You don't want to eat one of these. Don't lick this frog. What am I saying? Fun facts are over. <laughs> we are pretty far along with this little poison dart frog right now. I'm still waiting on cutting out this section between the legs. I think it's gonna make it extremely, extremely fragile when I do and there'll be edges to chamfer and round over and a lot of carving to do on them after I cut it out. So I'm gonna do that last. I'm gonna carve the body now. Need to make a hook slot too. I want the hook to be recessed into the body a little bit. That way it's good and weedless. I'm trying to get some really well-defined head detail around the eyes because the eyes on a poison dart frog, they're raised a little bit and they come out of the head. So I gotta bring the nose down and then I gotta bring an area behind the eyeball down a little bit. Um, I'm just kind of going back and forward with a picture of a poison dart frog and I'll be looking at the mouth next and then the back, whatever details are back there. They're a pretty smooth frog overall, so there's not a whole bunch to carve, but one area at a time works best for me. I've got this carved pretty well, pretty detailed. Nice hook slot in the back. The eyes are good. The feet are nice and webbed. Can you tell I'm slightly reluctant? to start cutting the legs out. All right, I'm just gonna go for it. Well, that went perfectly smooth no problems at all so now just got to smooth out all of these edges get it looking a bit more natural I don't think I've said how I want this action to be but the feet stick up like that to catch water I want them to kind of pull the legs back when you twitch the lure forward and straighten them out and then on the pause they'll come back I want that to be the action, just kind of just a top water twitch bait that might throw some water forward too because of these feet it might not throw much water either these feet might flatten out pretty easy, but mainly I just want the legs to straighten out and come back. I think that'll look pretty natural. There is the poison dart frog master before the wood sealed. Got it pretty close to how I want it, so I'm gonna start sealing. The poison dart frog is ready to mold. So this being an open pour flat mold, all I gotta do is glue it to a flat surface, put the mold box around it and fill it with silicone and the mold's done. I'm brushing some Vaseline on it as a mold release and to kind of get the finish on this bait really smooth.
trying to pour this and make sure that I don't trap any air on the undercuts. So I'm really letting it approach those areas really slow. I think the slower it fills in, the more efficiently it pushes the gases out. And you won't have bubbles. That's poured. Come back tomorrow and pour some more, this time hot plastic into that. We're gonna see how fancy I can get. There's all sorts of different colors for poison dart frogs. There's black and yellow, there's blue and black, there's just a rainbow of colors sometimes. Do anything. We're gonna get fancy. Oh boy, time to open it. I'm probably gonna break the skinny little legs off of the master while I do this, but I'm gonna try not to. That sounded bad. Wow, I didn't. It's still in there. I glued it against wax paper. I would prefer that the wax paper tears before anything breaks on the bait. I might want to use this master again. All right, that could not have worked out better. My master is still in one piece. I can make more molds with it. And we got a mold right here. Poison dart frog. I'm gonna clean all this flashing up. It's messy. I usually just pull it off like this. And then where it wants to be stubborn, I just cut it. I try not to do a lot of slicing because it'll show up on the castings. You don't want that. There's always little landmines of technique that you can bump into and it ends up in the end product showing a little problem. You kind of just have to learn what those are by experience, I guess. This is one of them. You don't want to cut into the silicone of this mold and deform your bait. Flat-sided baits like this already have a tendency to, you know, occasionally they look ugly because there's just a flat side to them, but if you cut into that flat side at all, it really shows up. Okay, I'm gonna finish this and pour this poison dart frog. Three minutes in there for both of those containers. Stir them, probably another minute, stir it. Another minute, stir it, 30 seconds. Keep stirring, add the stuff, pour. There are people that are a lot better than me at soft plastics, and we'll get into that later this video. Somebody else is gonna try this mold out. Somebody better at pouring soft plastics than me. That was still milky and not even close to gelling up yet. It's gotta go through that milk stage to a jelly stage to like clear stage and then you have to get it all the way to 350. I don't have a thermometer. Uh, I can kind of just tell. It's not very safe to do it that way, but you know. I'm going with black and yellow, chartreuse. I'm gonna mix a little bit of the pearl white in with the chartreuse. I'm gonna pour the black first kind of in spot and try not to get it all just pulled up on the bottom. I'm gonna try to get it like, I'm gonna hold the mold like this and pour it and let it kind of cool off and then move it again and pour it and let it cool off. That way it's spots of black and then I'm gonna fill the rest of the thing up with that chartreuse. Now it's gelling up, it's getting kind of clear. All right, this is about 350. I'm gonna try something here I've never done. I'm gonna try to degas this while it's hot and see if that makes a difference in getting this plastic really clear. Usually you degas it Usually you degas it in its uh, milky state right out of the pail, but I'm gonna try this and see how it works. It's looking like it's gonna overflow pretty quickly. I'm gonna not let it do that by shooting it with air. Oh, there we go, Never mind. It's working. We're about 10 PSI away from a full vacuum. Yeah, hopefully this works out good. That worked really good, it's perfectly clear in there. I have to get rid of this bubbly stuff on the side of the container, but sweet. Stayed pretty hot too. I think it was well insulated inside of that vacuum. All right, I'm gonna add my colorants and stuff. This is gonna be the, the lighter chartreuse color. So start out with some pearl. I need to mix this well. It's been a while. All right, did the same process for this little guy. It's perfectly clear. Just gotta clear the sides a little better. We're gonna add the black.
So I'm pouring some, trying to let it set up a little bit, go into a different part of the lure, pouring some more. Let it, let that set up a little bit. You can tilt it a little bit too, if you want a bigger splotch. I'm blowing on it like I'm trying to cool off a spoonful of food. I'm trying to kind of stay away from the legs, I think. I want those all to be one color and one homogenous piece of plastic that was poured at one time. I got four, oops, all right, those kind of connected because I tilted the camera and it wasn't cooled off enough. I got four splotches of plast black plastic in there and now we're gonna add the yellow. The yellow's gonna be a bit more tricky because I have to pour the legs too. So I'm gonna open up the mold wide back there and try to fill in all of the area. The skinny little legs need to be perfectly filled. That was messy. This mold is gonna require a lot of cleaning. But we did it. It can be cleaned. Actually, I can clean up a little bit right now. Well, if I try that, I'm gonna screw things up. So I'm just gonna leave it and clean it when it's cooled off. I think this is gonna look good though. Okay, it's been a few minutes. Time for demold. I'm gonna take these legs out first. There's the foot. There's the other foot. That is freaking adorable. <laughs> I'm gonna toss this in some water, let it float there and cool off for a while and make some more of these. Gluing some eyeballs on. They look really good in those protruded eye sockets. Well, I think I did it. I'd say those definitely resemble more of a poison dart frog than just a normal frog or a toad. That one looks more like a toad because I wanted a darker complexion over the whole thing, but those look delicious. Deceptively delicious. Just like a real poison dart frog, right? Um, let's go see how these work. See if the feet do a lot of, you know, extension and then contraction when you don't reel it in. Let's see how these work, see if we can catch a fish. Let's go. It is smack dab in the middle of the day, about one o'clock, super sunny, barely a cloud in the sky. I'm here at this pond where there are a ton of frogs and tadpoles. So we gotta find the stupid bass that will eat a poison dart frog. I got all day, let's find it. If I get a hit, I need to remember to lower my rod tip a little bit and wait like a second and then set the hook. Okay, last time I was here, it was with the little crappie one day build crankbait and it was blown out and flooded. I would be underwater right now, but it's looking pretty good now. It's just a matter of seeing if they're biting or not. First cast. Okay. To the river I go. Here we are at the river. That one. Oh, shoot. I think I snagged it, whatever it was. There's a scale. I don't know how I snagged something with this weedless frog lure, but I managed to. <laughs> Dang. Got me all excited. Got one. Oh, that took forever. Oh. Whew. It's getting a little worried there. I was fishing in silence for like an hour, <laughs> but we got a nice bass on the frog. It went for a poison dart frog. It's official. Bass like poison dart frogs.
had a little gymnast there doing rolls. Let's finish this day off and try to get another. I can tell when the fish are biting. This is gonna be a fun bait to fish with. I know the Texas rig, it's a proven rig. You get good hookups with it. It's required that the, the fish bites down the plastic to expose the hook point and everything. But yeah, I just felt a little, little, little tug from that bass. And I was like, oh, fish. And I waited a second and then set the hook and worked out perfect. In the past, I've been more of a, a jig guy. Exposed hook, single hook point on the top kind of thing, but I have to tell you something. I'm going to ship this mold out to another YouTuber. He makes soft plastics, does all sorts of injections and hand pours. He's very good. You guys should check him out. And I can't wait to see what he's gonna do with this mold. Channel name is World's Worst Fishing. I'm sure I'll leave a link in the description. So go there, take a look at the stuff that he does. It's pretty sharp, it's pretty good. And uh, yeah, check out Chris's stuff. And keep an eye out for the poison dart frog on his channel. Get all these nice and lined up. We'll get an outro shot. On to the next bait.